So you wanna stop wasting money, huh? I get it, I get it. Everybody wants to stop wasting money, but how? How do they stop wasting money? Today, I am here to tell you seven things that frugal people do that you don't. The first thing frugal people do is they keep a basic pantry up to a well-stocked pantry to help meal planning, dinner making, and saving money on food easier and faster. If you have no idea what you should buy for a beginner pantry, what you should add, let's talk about that right now. Flour, oatmeal, pasta, oil, salt, brown and white sugar, pepper, assorted spices, chicken bouillon, baking soda, baking powder, dried beans, yeast, rice. With those basic pantry items, you can cook basically anything. In fact, if you just have a big bag of flour, you have the starting block for dozens and dozens of recipes. It's amazing how far a bag of flour will go. Unless you're gluten-free, maybe that's not the right choice for you. Frugal people like to double up. What the heck does that mean? It means you get double the use out of an item. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Number one, every frugal person I know cuts this in half. Um, you still use the sponge for the same amount of time, but I have to buy half as many sponges. That might seem like a weird one to you, but I actually don't know how to use a large sponge now because this size fits perfectly into a cup. I'm pretty sure my kids think they're sold in this size. Another example is they wear their clothes twice as long before washing them and before replacing them. I tell my kids all the time, like pants, pants are rarely dirty unless you see visible dirt on them or if they smell. Shirts I wash a little bit more frequently. Socks, definitely. The intimates, definitely. But if the shirt like doesn't smell, if you weren't sweaty that day, hang it back up. He's not talking about your shirt. Your shirt is fine. <laughs> And then if you tend to purchase more classic pieces of clothing instead of fast fashion, they will last years and 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 years instead of one season or one year. Another thing frugal people do is track their spending. They know how much they've spent, what's in their bank account, what has cleared out of their bank account, when bills are due, when they come out, and when they get paid. There is something about having all of the information that gives you a sense of confidence that is really, really hard to duplicate. It's one thing to go to the store and be like, yes, I wanna buy XYZ steaks and these shoes and oh my gosh, that bag, and pull out a card and swipe it and hope to all that is holy that something won't bounce and you won't hit your credit limit. Credit card, you got it. Also by understanding what money is coming in and what money is going out, you can make bigger financial goals. You can make those goals and accomplish them. That's why I developed this unique new program for managing your debt. It's called Don't Buy Stuff You Cannot Afford. You can change your spending habits because you're so in tune with what you're doing. How do you do that? You could use an Excel spreadsheet, that's what I do. You can use paper and pen. I did that for absolute years. And there's apps for all of these things. Some are paid, some are free. When my sister was first married and very young, they were having a hard time with her budget, as most newlyweds do when they marry young. And I helped her go through her budget. And what we found out, what she didn't know, is that they were spending so much money in fast food. We added up the entire month. And back then it was like, you know, a Wendy's burger for $1.50 and a fries for another dollar. You get out of Wendy's for three bucks and have a whole meal. But because it was so often, because it was such a small amount, it added up to about $150 a month from fast food purchases from like Taco Bell and Wendy's. That $150 when your budget is really tight goes a very long way in paying off student loans, paying a major bill, or making a car payment. If she didn't take a deep dive into the finances, she wouldn't have found the leak, she wouldn't have been able to make daily habit changes, and wouldn't have been able to focus on other financial items. Good old DIY. Frugal people tend to do things themselves. And that can go from remodeling or something as simple as hanging curtains or doing a fake wood wall. So for example, uh, this is my bedroom. It's actually really, really small. And so I don't have the depth of space to put a bed frame here, like a headboard and a footboard. There's no room. I need the extra six inches for walking room. So I decided to take this like $20 faux wood slats from Lowe's and nail them up on the wall. <laughs> I think I want to paint them black actually. This is something even I can do. So I kind of create like a faux headboard. 
um, and I did it all myself. So I even have friends that hire out things like hanging curtains or installing a shelf in a garage because they don't have the skills to be able to do those things. But if you can do those things, you don't have to hire them out. You really can save a ton of money by learning some basic DIY skills. One of the biggest ones is your car, changing your own oil. Although some places I know do a no frills for like 30 bucks, it's almost impossible to buy the products for that cheap. But when it comes to like tire rotations and uh, switching out your brakes, those are not very hard to do. You just need a couple of tools and a little bit of know-how. I might even ask around your neighborhood and see if there's some guys around who have the tools and are willing to help you the first time because once you know how it's really simple but it's so simple the diy you won't see me doing are like dollar tree hot glue gun crafty things if you want to see that you're gonna have to go to my friend bethany's channel instead i don't even think i have a glue gun and while we're in my bedroom talking about like this nice faux headboard that's probably going to turn black here pretty soon uh we might as well talk about my bed because something else that frugal people always do and invest in quality pieces that are going to last 10 to 20 years, like a mattress. Conveniently enough, Helix is sponsoring today's video. Let me tell you about them. What? You don't know about Helix Mattress? The company that makes premium mattresses shipped directly to your door, customized for you, just using an online quiz that takes less than five minutes? Well, once you know about them, you will never look back. We love our Helix mattress so much that we don't even like to travel anywhere because I don't want to use a mattress that's not this mattress. Otherwise, like I wake up with a cramp in my back. We love it so much. I got one for my daughter's room. I got one for my son's room. And we have coming right now two more twin Helix mattresses. My whole house is going to be Helix mattresses. I sleep so well on this mattress that I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna commit something to you right now. I'm gonna commit to sleeping 12 hours a night. Yeah, just trying to get in like a nice tight 12. And with this mattress, it can be done, my friends. So listen, like I said before, you take an online quiz, tell them if you're like a back sleeper, side sleeper, a rolly around sleeper. They recommend a mattress to you. I have the Sunset Lux. It's the softest mattress they make. Some people say I'm a little crazy, but I like it. I like it soft. I like to sink into my mattress. It comes up rolled in a box, super easy to set up. Shh, goes like that. And then you can sleep in it that night. And did I mention it comes with two free pillows? Two free pillows. Scared to buy something like this online? I hear you. They're giving you a 100 night sleep trial to make sure it's gonna work for you. Easy returns if you decide it doesn't, but I seriously doubt that will happen. They have a 10 year warranty, payment plans, financing options, different levels to fit your budget. Helix is going to give you guys 20% off your mattress. All you have to do is go to helixsleep.com slash frugalfitmom. They're gonna give you 20% off and two free pillows. It's the first link down in the doobly-doo. It's also in the comments. It also has free shipping in the United States. Helixsleep.com slash frugalfitmom. 20%, two free pillows. You're not gonna wanna miss it. It wouldn't be a Christine video if we didn't talk about meal planning. If you do nothing else in your food budget, except for meal plan, make a list. Wrong, it's a list. And stick to your list, you will save a ton of money. I have a friend. We used to go grocery shopping when our kids were very small. We would go out after the kids were in bed at 8.30 p.m. Uh, because going anywhere by yourself when you have small children is like the same as going to the spa. Amen, sister. So we would go to the grocery store, kidless. It was the best of times. I had my list and my meal plan and I would buy the things off my list and put them in my cart. I'd spend like $100 for two weeks worth of groceries. And she would wander around with no list and do things like, these look kind of fun. Oh, these avocados look nice. And just throw things in her cart and go home. So she have a cart full of groceries. She always spent four times the amount that I spent and still didn't know what was for dinner. So if that's you, take this opportunity to try this. If you don't know how to meal plan, my friend Jen Chapin made an entire course on it. I'll leave that info below if you wanna go check it out. This is how I do it. This is a very simplified version. So I go into like my freezer and I'm like, okay, I need to use up some of the stuff that's in my freezer. So I pulled some out, let's show it to you. I have these ham, like frozen ham chunks. This is cooked. I can make ham tetrazzini out of this. I can make a ham hash. I can make ham pot pie. So I'm gonna write it down. Ham tetrazzini, cause there's no bones in that. So it's easy. Tetch. Tra Z me. I become a very bad speller in front of other people. <laughs> but normally I'm a good speller. I'm a great speller with autocorrect. So for my ham tetrazzini, I have the pasta. Uh, I have the cream. I have the sour cream. I don't have garlic. Let's add that. 
Garlic's gonna go on my shopping list. Let's do a side salad. And you can go as easy as salad kit. Okay, you don't even have to buy all of the different ingredients. Just write down salad kit. Great, I have a meal. I also have these frozen blackberries. Don't these look delicious? I have a recipe for whole grain spice blackberry muffins. I'm making them. Because I keep a basic pantry, I have every basic ingredient I need to cook muffins. So let's talk about the wet ingredients. Do I have the milk? Do I have the eggs? Oh, low on eggs. Let's throw eggs into this and I have a breakfast. So I have the beginnings of my list. Uh, garlic, salad kit, eggs, baked rice, Brussels sprouts. So as soon as I have like my dinners, I can do a quick inventory. What are we gonna eat for breakfast the next day? I have tons of oatmeal and cereal. Check that off the list, I don't need it. What about lunches? There's some bread in my freezer downstairs and I'm fully stocked on deli meat and cheeses. I would like some lettuce and tomato for my sandwiches. Now I need a few snacks. We, apples are always good. My kids like string cheese, we'll write that down. And boom, that's my list. This is the list I take to the store and shop from. So I have a very specific plan, a very specific list. And if you don't deviate, you will be amazed at how low your grocery bill can be and how little food waste you end up with. What do you have in your house that you can use for something else? Repurpose it for something else. So my Walmart does have a big bin that recycles these, although at this point, Tell me what you think. Are we being lied to about recycling? Tell me down in the comments. I, sometimes I'm like, are they really recycling all these bags? What are they doing with these? I use these to line the little trash cans I have here in my house and to line the trash can I have in my camper. I already have them. Uh, in my state, these are free. They still hand them out everywhere. And if you do like a Walmart pickup, you're gonna end up with like a million of these because they only know how to put one item in one bag. Walmart pickup, am I right? right. My kids even use them for like lunch boxes. <laughs> we don't have lunch boxes in my house. Is that like super sad and weird? To me it isn't because they just use these and if something spills in them, it's no big deal and I don't have to clean it. Here's another one I did recently. Uh, I was trying to figure out how to make my bedroom work better for me. It's a small room, like I said earlier. And I had these nightstands that I liked, but they were all open. So there was just like stuff piling everywhere because they were flat surfaces. Now my daughter's room had nightstands that are drawers. And because she graduated and left, uh, she doesn't need them anymore. So I switched them. <laughs> I stole her nightstands and put them in my bedroom. I actually love the way it looks. The white nightstands, they have drawers. I can hide everything in them. And so there's nothing out anymore. Oh my gosh, it's so fantastic. If you're decorating a room, go find your decorations from a different room. Vases of flowers, coffee table books throws, throw pillows. Now I don't have any of those things, <laughs> but if I did, I guarantee you, I would be moving them from room to room to help me decorate a little bit more. If you guys wanna help me decorate, let me know down in the comments and maybe we could like we could work something out. Last but definitely not least, have you thought about embracing minimalism? Now, I don't mean getting rid of all of your clothes. I don't mean getting rid of your throw pillows or all of your dishes in your kitchen. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what do you have in your house that is excess because you, you thought you might need it, but you actually don't. I'll give you an example. Have you thought about simplifying your cleaning products? I mean like minimizing your cleaning products. You don't actually need that many. Who has these Mrs. Myers everyday surface cleaners? Guess what? I don't even like these. <laughs> they leave a film, so I spray, I wipe, and then there's a sticky film and I have to wipe it again. You know what? I'm getting rid of this today. <laughs> I am simplifying. I am never buying the Mrs. Myers what is this? Multi-surface spray again. I'm done, that's it. You know what I do like? Windex, I love it. You can use it for mirrors, windows, stainless steel, the top of my stove, bathroom counters, toilets. Somebody gave me the mati. Put some Windex on. Oh God, please. You could probably use it on the floor. It actually does leave a streak free shine and I even like the way it smells. Why do I need this one if I have Dawn dish soap and hot water? Why do I need this one if I have vinegar and bleach? You don't, like you, you really don't need that many cleaning products. How many throw pillows do you actually have? Like, do you have a storage closet just for throw pillows? No, Christine, I don't. Doesn't that seem crazy? How many extra set of sheets? How many extra set of towels? All I've noticed about extra sheets and towels is it gives my kids permission to throw the dirty ones on the floor and not wash them because there's always new ones available. <laughs>
And then there's more laundry. Another thing that minimalism has taught me, and hopefully that you learn from it as well, I think frugality and min minimalism go really hand in hand in a lot of things. But the big one is that you can have an extremely fulfilling life without all this stuff. Everything that you have, the stuff that you have, they are just tools to make your life work. The things that really, really matter is you. The things that really matter are people. How do you feel when you come in contact with a certain person? Did you leave them better than you found them? How are your relationships with your siblings, with your kids, with your parents, with your friends, with your coworkers? Those are the things that really, really matter. Not having the latest Mrs. Myers scent to spray your kitchen counters with. Well, that's debatable, I must say. And to me, that's the core of minimalism and frugality is finding value, like saving money where you can, finding value in what really matters and not overloading your life with excess. Remember, if you wanna get a great night's sleep, I do have that deal from Helix down below in the doobly-doo today. If I left out some frugal or minimalism hacks that you love, let me know what they are down below. I'll see you next video, bye. Thanks for coming to the after show. Today we are going to talk about food because I'm just here for the food. Food is my favorite thing. Food brings me joy. I wanted to talk super, super briefly about my health issues for this year. I mentioned it very, very briefly earlier on this year. So back in February, I had some health issues. Kidney stones were the kickoff. And then I had some serious abdominal pain for about three weeks. Couldn't eat anything. Life took a very downward turn and I learned a lot about myself. One of them was the importance of taking care of my uh, gut health and the things I was eating. I've like been slowly moving into that this year. The day I'm filming this video, I'm training for a mountain bike race and I, I had another flare up, like stomach flare up about a week ago. So I have been not feeling well for the last week or so, which means again, I haven't eaten any, anything for a week while trying to train for this mountain bike race. And if you've ever tried to train for a sporting event while not eating anything and having severe stomach pains, it doesn't work very well. One day I was doing a mountain bike climb. So I rode my bike from the bottom of a mountain to the top of a mountain, rode back down and then rode back up. I did it twice. I was so hungry when I was done, I thought I was going to pass out. I was like, ooh, like that, okay? I needed food stat. So Dave had one of these in his backpack, um, this Kirkland trail mix. Okay, trail mix is not something I generally reach for. I was so desperate. I was like, yes, I will, I will eat the trail mix. I opened it up and I started eating. Holy mother of all that is holy. This is freaking delicious. Have you had these? There is so much salt in this. I love it. Actually, it says the sodium's not that high. What? What I don't understand is how the sodium amount is so low on the back, but this was like the saltiest goodness I had ever had. This is a bold statement. This is the best trail mix I have ever had. Go buy it, love it, put it in your backpacks, put it in your stuff while you're hiking and biking and all those things. Also, in case you're wondering about my stomach, as of yesterday, my flare up has dissipated, but it has reminded me again how important it is to like watch the foods that you put in your body. I am trying to use up the stuff I have in my pantry, but I'm not actually eating a lot of it. Uh, I do a lot of like protein and vegetables, but don't worry, I'm, I'm better. Like I'm feeling really good like yesterday and today. I'm on the mend, it's gonna be fine. We are watching it, we are paying attention. Don't worry, I've been to the doctor too. Go to Costco, go buy these. That's all I got, bye.